In this video, we're going to look at the variation of the Gibbs free energy with respect to changes in pressure. Now we know from the differential of the Gibbs free energy that there is an explicit uh, pressure dependence for the Gibbs free energy. So we know that DG is going to be equal to BDP minus SDT. Right, this is the expression of the Gibbs free energy with respect to its natural variables, right? Tep temperature and pressure. So we know that there's this pressure dependence since this differential depends on DP, right? So let's say that we have an isothermal process. So if we consider an isothermal process, right? So if we know that the process is isothermal, that means that there's no temperature change. That means DT is gonna be zero. So this entire term drops out to be zero. So what does that mean for our Gibbs free energy? Well, that means that it only depends on a change in pressure, right? And what I wanna stress here, whenever we're making any generalizations with these uh, differentials, the, we're not assuming anything about our gas. We're not assuming that it follows the Van der Waals equation or ideal gas law or anything. For an isothermal process, this is true for the Gibbs free energy, uh, full stop. You know, uh, with uh, as far as any type of uh, dependence for this uh, gas's Gibbs free energy is going to be only dependent on the pressure. So uh, at this point, we haven't assumed anything about our gas yet. So uh, we know that this is going to be true for any um, any isothermal process that it's Gibbs free energy is going to be a function of pressure alone. Right. So um, if we want to solve for the change in Gibbs free energy, then that means we have to integrate both sides. So that means that we'll end up with delta G being equal to the integral of V dp. Right. So we're going to have to integrate this guy from some uh, initial pressure PI to some final pressure PF. Right, so uh, integrating from some initial to final pressure. Now, I want to expand this delta G, right? We know that this is just gonna be final minus initial. So we're gonna have a final Gibbs energy minus an initial Gibbs energy, right? That's gonna be equal to this integral Right, and so if we wanted to isolate the final Gibbs energy, right? So if we uh, knew some initial conditions about our system and we wanted to solve for the final uh, Gibbs energy, right? We can just isolate this guy algebraically. So we'll have the initial Gibbs energy plus this integral. Right, so clearly this integral is very important, right? The, the initial and final Gibbs energy are exactly the same, save for this integral, right? So it's basically the initial Gibbs energy plus the evaluation of this integral. So now I'm gonna make an assumption about our gas. Let's say that we have an ideal gas. Um, if we do have an ideal gas, then we'll, it'll, its volume and pressure relationship will look like the following plot, right? We'll get that uh, general, ideal isotherm from our volume. So um, if we know we're dealing with some initial pressure P, like let's say that this is um, a gas compression. So we're dealing with a initial pressure that's down here at some lower pressure. And when we compress the gas, it goes up to this higher pressure, right? So um, that means that it's gonna correspond to these two points on the curve, right? So, if we were to solve for that integral, right, what we're doing is solving for the area underneath this curve, right? So the, um, the integral would give us the area under the curve between PI and PF, right? So if I were to annotate this guy, this is just the integral of V dP, right? <laughs> that didn't come out as clear as I thought, so let me just put that right there, right? This is integral of VDP, right? So uh, when you integrate this function from some initial to final pressure, you're really uh, getting the area under the curve between two points, PI and PF, right? And tacking that on gives you this final Gibbs energy. Now we know that if we have an ideal gas, then we can actually solve this integral. 
right? So if we have an ideal gas, we can put our ideal gas volume into the integrand. So then we end with NRT over P dP, right? And we've solved this integral plenty of times before for other thermodynamic variables. So we know that that's going to be equal to NRT ln PF over PI. Right, so this gives you a general relationship uh, for an ideal gas in order to solve for the Gibbs energy uh, when you know which pressure range you're looking at, right? So if you know the parameters of your expansion or compression, then you can solve for this Gibbs energy change. Now, oftentimes, uh, Gibbs free energies are expressed as molar quantities, so molar Gibbs energies. So for molar Gibbs energies, the way that I annotate this um, is just to put a bar, just like we do for the molar volume, where the molar volume is V bar. Uh, the molar Gibbs free energy I denote as G bar. And so we'll have the final molar Gibbs energy is equal to the initial molar Gibbs energy plus RT LN PF over PI. So essentially all I've done here is just divide by N on both sides for each term, right? So this is if you're dealing with molar quantities. So this is the molar Gibbs energy. Right, so as with our other uh, thermodynamic variables, very important to see how it varies with respect to pressure and temperature, or especially in this case, since pressure and temperature are the natural variables for the Gibbs energy.